Hello, welcome to the second video for week two. In this video, I'm going to talk about the power, the calculus properties of power series, as well as a number of other miscellaneous topics that will be useful when we work through power series for the rest of the videos for this week. The calculus section here is going to be very, very short. And this is really one of the main advantages of using power series, is doing the basic operations of calculus with power series is immediate and straightforward. And this is a big difference from the complicated differentiation, let alone integration techniques for the other elementary functions. So if I have an infinite series with some domain of convergence, um, alpha minus r, alpha plus r, or all real numbers if the radius is infinite, then to differentiate this, I just take the derivative term by term. It's just like differentiating a polynomial. So this exponent n comes down, the new exponent is n minus 1. I start here at n equals 1 because the first term here is a constant. C0 is a constant. My series starts like f equals C0 plus C1x minus alpha, so forth and so on. So when I differentiate, this constant C0 goes away. So the first thing I will start with is going to be the C1 term. So that's one little subject to remember that the index of the sum changes because we get rid of the constant. But other than that, I'm just differentiating term by term. Integrating, likewise, I just integrate term by term. So this exponent increases. I divide by the new exponent. Um, I add some constant of integration. Index doesn't change here because no terms are removed in integration. And hopefully, you find this absolutely lovely. Compared to doing integrals of most other functions, there's nothing to this. We integrate. We get a new series. We can analyze that new series. Everything is wonderful. I'm repeating myself, but it, it really is such an important point that one of the reasons we like power series is that integrals and derivatives take no work whatsoever. Um, some notation here. This means, the, these properties mean that I can take as many derivatives and as many integrals as I want. A function where I can take as many derivatives as I want is called um, a C infinity function. This comes from the notation um, Cn, which refers to the number of continuous derivatives a function has. So this is just useful notation to know about. So in this second case, a function g is in class cn, if I can differentiate it n times and the result is continuous. And a function f is in class c infinity, if I can differentiate it any number of times. And power series are always in class c infinity. All this takes place in the domain. So all this will remain true with the same radius convergence all the way through. I said I wanted to talk about a couple of miscellaneous topics. One of them is patterns and exponents. So sometimes we have series that have a lot of zero terms, that only certain terms are non-zero that come with certain patterns. The most common are odds and evens. So if I want to talk about odds and evens, if, if some index k is only going to be odd or some index k is only going to be even, I'm going to write those as 2n and 2n plus 1 as n ranges to the natural numbers. So if I wanted to write a series where, which had only even non-zero terms, so that all the odd coefficients were zero, I had no odd powers in my expansion, I'd write it as the sum n equals zero to infinity x to the 2n. Notice that this n and this exponent don't match anymore, so that c3 is actually the coefficient of x to the 6, not x to the 3. And that's just typical notation of how we do this, a little subtlety compared to the standard way of writing them. Uh, likewise, if I wanted just odd coefficients, exponents, I would have x to the 2n plus 1. And again here, c3 is the coefficient here of x to the 7. And I can do this with all sorts of patterns. Odds and evens are the most common, but I can certainly do it for other ones. If I wanted only numbers which are multiples of 3, I could write the sum n equals 0 to infinity cn x to the 3n. And so this would be c0 plus c1x cubed plus c2x to the 6, so forth and so on. I get a series like that. And these patterns of exponents can be as simple or as complicated as you want. Here's a series that starts at 7 and only includes each term where I add 5 to the exponent after that. All of these patterns are reasonable. With these, since I'm excluding a bunch of coefficients, all the coefficients I'm excluding are non-zero. So the formula I gave in the previous video for the radius of convergence had a condition that the coefficients needed to be non-zero. So I can't use that formula here with these CNs. So to calculate radius of convergence, 
In these cases, I have to go back to ratio test. Lastly, I want to give a couple of examples of what we can do with infinite series, with power series. Now that we've defined what power series are, they let us define a whole pile of new functions. This is another reason that we use power series, is we gain access to an enormous world of non-elementary functions. Here are some examples um, that of, of many, I could have taken hundreds and thousands of different examples, but here are some examples. Uh, these JK, these are Bessel functions, show up in certain applications in physics. So these are power series centered at the origin only with even exponents. And the, uh, the term here is a bit complicated. They're alternating named one to the n, two to the two n plus k, n plus k factorial squared. Uh, k is some index, usually an integer, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, the CK are the Clifford functions, another function centered at the origin. These are interesting because their coefficients involve the irrational number pi, which is pretty strange. Uh, these li are called polylogarithms. They're meant to generalize, generalize the logarithm. They look a little bit like zeta series. We've got a one over n to the s. So this coefficient s is sort of like the exponent p in a zeta series. But now I'm allowed to have a variable in the exponent as well. And these do generalize logarithms. Um, if you calculate l1 and compare it to some known series, you find that l1 is in fact a, a shifted logarithm multiplied by negative one. And the, again, these are just some examples from a whole huge world of examples of non-elementary functions that we can concoct using power series.